Hello, um, everyone. I hope that you can hear me well. Um, I would like to welcome you all to this uh, webinar that Ahmed is doing uh, in partnership with NAccess. Um, before I start, a quick, um, just a very quick um, housekeeping rules. So um, myself and Vivian, we will be presenting throughout this uh, throughout this uh, webinar on the side you have uh, the chat where you can ask questions um, and you also we will also be pulling some questions on another another tab that you have which is the polls um, so feel free to please just keep an eye on those as we will be asking for for your interaction uh, we will present to you very shortly the agenda um, but just to let you know that we will run this within the hour, so we will keep to time. And we do appreciate that it's the middle of the business day, so we do take, uh, we do thank you for being here with us. Uh, but we do find that this is going to be quite useful to you. So, without any further ado, my name is Ricardo Pereira. I am the president of the Renewable Energy Association of Mozambique, AMER, and I would like uh, to also invite Vivian to. Do a quick intro. Hi, uh, thank you, Ricardo. Thank you for this great introduction. And it's uh, great to be here and to do this with Amer. Uh, I'm Vivian Barnier, the CEO of the NXS Foundation, and will present you today a lot about our work and open source um, for renewables and energy access. Back to you, Ricardo. Thank you, Vivian. Okay, so as I've mentioned, we will keep to time. Um, this is the agenda that we will follow today. So we will do uh, quick introductions about who we are and um, and uh, how Ahmed and NXS have actually come to this to do this joint webinar together. Um, and then I will hand over to Vivian, who will run you through why we've actually uh, why we are pushing for and why we are here to share with you uh, the reasons of uh, and the methodology between open source we will share with you some of the and we'll give you some of the open source innovations that we feel will greatly uh, support and be of of interest to you and specifically your business and then we will have um 20 minutes right at the end where we can do uh, questions and answers where you're very free to send your questions via the chat either to myself or to Vivian and we can then discuss. Um, I would like to really encourage your participation. Um, a lot of this uh, and the way we take this forward will be uh, pro uh, based on your feedback. So we're here to also understand, although there are a number of tools that we would like to present, we're here to also understand what is your interest. And depending on that, we are able to then provide more information, do other sessions, um, and um, yeah, and just and just build on your needs rather than us just uh, uh, talking and talking about tools that maybe don't necessarily interest you. Um, last and, um, and not least, um, just to inform you that this session is being recorded um, and therefore, um, we are able to share. So once the session is over and done, uh, this platform actually will send you the recording. So if at any point you want to revisit some of the things that we have discussed, you're able to do that. And right at the end, we will also share our contact details so that you can get in touch with uh, Ahmed and, uh, and, uh, and, and access for any other questions. Okay. So. Um, let's get started right away. I do, this was an invitation that was broadcasted on a number of platforms. So I am not sure how many uh, are, are familiar with the MER. So I will do a quick introduction and, um, and maybe to some of our members that are here, it's also good to have a refresh. So here we are, this is the Renewable Energy Association, or like we say in, in Portuguese, Associação Moçambicana de Energias Renováveis. And what do we do? We are, we are founded in 2017, and we're really here to foster the growth of the renewable energy sector here in Mozambique. Um, we have this uh, a very clear mission where we are here to respond to the needs of our members and add value. And hence, 
why when NX has approached us with this opportunity, we really jumped at it uh, on the first go because it is about providing our members with value and with um, with tools that will help your business, right? And and this is where we are. We are at the part where NXS has been doing this for a while. Well, sorry, I just see that we have someone all the way from Argentina. That's very nice. Uh, so we are here about, you know, it's about providing these access to opportunities, but more importantly about uh, knowledge sharing. Vivian will go into this, but this is all open source and I don't know how much you're familiar with open source, but as we say in Portuguese, it's all mahala. It's all for free and it's all, um, available to you. So it's really about creating awareness to you that these tools are out here and, and are available to you. Um, so what does a mer do apart from uh, trying to keep its mission and bringing value? So we have done a couple of uh, uh, important things uh, with that regard. And, and this is our value proposition to all of our members. We are becoming a one-stop shop for sector information. So we are producing the annual publications, which are the summary of the of the sector. These are annual publications, but we also do ad hoc. So the ones you see there, where, where we've done a report on the impact of COVID, we've done a couple of other reports, and it's really about just bringing a lot of the statistics and information um, uh, to the forefront and making it completely available. Um, uh, there, are, uh, there are our members obviously do have priority and a lot of these, a lot of this information, but it is open to all. Um, we, to our members, we are continuously providing updated on the, on sector news, business opportunities. This is done to, through, through our communications, uh, platform. Um, and there's also here, here in Mozambique, we are still able to use platforms like WhatsApp groups and so on, which just make that interaction on, on business to business, just so much easier. For those of you that don't know and are members and haven't had this, so we have provided both financial, technical, and legal advice to our members. So Ahmed does have this opportunity of working with other consultants that do provide these members. Um, and we have an employment platform that we will be launching later on this year that aims to provide, um, and I'm, not, I'm sure here there's a variety of people. There is business people, but there's also students maybe. And this is the, what the plan, platform really intends to do, where we are joining, well, that's why it's called uh, 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 the talent platform or Plataforma Talento, where we are trying to identify young Mozambicans, uh, talented Mozambicans, and trained Mozambicans in the renewable energy sector to universities, through training centers and so on and try to introduce them to um, the private sector and um, and get them employment. I've just this morning, so this is really fresh news. I've just this morning had a had a, had a conversation with one of our our of our partners, which is Moss Parks, and we will be rolling out again over over a hundred uh, internships for green jobs, paid internships. So Amer members do keep an eye out for that. Um, and lastly, but not least, I think we, this is what we, this is also what we're about providing these training courses, webinars. So I'm very happy to be here today, uh, with NXS where we're, we're giving this webinar about open source platforms. And then I will close, uh, my introduction by inviting you all. Um, and once again, this is for free, uh, uh, you don't have to be a member to attend this, but Amer, uh, together with its partners. Uh, get invest giz alert in the european union we will be doing uh um a renewable energy uh, conference which is uh, right after the global gateway conference which is the european union's uh, event but we will be doing our third edition of the renewable energy conference in mozambique on november so do keep an eye for that because that is the biggest gathering of the sector uh, where both international and local companies come together, policy makers um, and, uh, and development funds, as well as other commercial funding um, to try and have a, a, an honest dialogue of where our sector is at the moment. Okay, so I think that is it from my side. Thank you very much. My contact is there and my colleague, Elena McPoon, which I'm sure all, most of you are aware of, um, she has provided our our email also on the chat, so do feel free to uh, to get in touch with us. All right, Vivian, over to you.
Thank you, Ricardo. Um, obrigado. Um, that's where my Portuguese stops. Um, uh, thanks a lot for this intro also about Amer. It was also insightful for me. Uh, I learned a bit more on all the activities you have. And um, sounds you have a, a great offering for your members. Um, let me move on now to NXIS and the open source approach that we will be talking about today. Um, the, the main question that I want to discuss or answer also just in the beginning is why open source? Why, why uh, is NXIS engaged exclusively about open source projects for energy access? Um, that's one for us relatively easy to answer, but maybe not for everybody as easy to understand. Uh, that's why, why we want to pull it out. In our observation or experience, I mean, I'm an energy access practitioner and have worked in the private sector in energy access. And one of my learnings and experiences is that energy access organizations, private companies, but also nonprofits, often spend scare funds in developing software and hardware, doing R&D work uh, for achieving electrification, which is natural because it's a technology-based area. However, very often these developments um, are just reinventions of the wheel. Obviously, there are outstanding inventions and developments which are necessary, which make the core of the business. But very, very often these developments are just or is underlying baseline infrastructure, which is required by, by most or all energy access practitioners trying to reach remote customers. And that's where we believe an uh, open source needs to come in to provide this baseline infrastructure to, to the sector, and then the companies can build on. Now, how does NXS do, uh, do its open source work, its open source support work? What, what we do is we support, we curate, and we promote. Uh, in the su support, what we do is we identify and find tools and softwares and technologies and hardware that are missing in the sector to to the companies which are necessary to them, to their business, and we help the, the creation and adoption of these tools and technology. Secondly, in the creation, once developed or identified um, and out there for use, we curate, we, ma we maintain a high quality repository, we make sure maintenance, basic maintenance is done so that people still can access and find documentation and, and find a way to using these innovations and leveraging them for, for their businesses. And lastly, promotion. That's why you guys are here today as well and why we are here. We want to, ma to make the sector aware about the availability of open innovations and the value of open source for the business, for their business, and how they can leverage and how they can use open source innovations to spare time and resources in their developments, in their businesses to then build more efficient ecosystem for their own business. Now, let me tell you a few figures about open source in energy access. We, we did an exercise some time back to understand where, where does open source stand in the energy access sector? Who actually uses um, open source? And what do the users believe about, uh, think about open source? So, um, as we said, open source is about a sector-wide impact. We want to provide a baseline infrastructure to the sector so that all sector organizations can benefit of it. So, and one of the figures that we found out is 90% of users of open source in energy access are likely to use it again. So a relatively high or very high satisfactory, satisfi satisfaction rate for, uh, for open source innovations in energy access. That's one of the figures that motivates us. So we, we see people really want to use it again and want to use more of it. Um, some other figures, we, we also understood that around 40% um, of today's energy access companies are aware that uh, open innovations exist. So there's still a 60% um, of companies that don't know that there are open innovations available for them to use. 
that's another reason why, why we're here today and we hope some of these 60 percent uh, are here and listening to us um on the other hand we, we know that uh, 21 percent um of uh, energy exit practitioners are already using open innovations today so there's still a way to go there's still 80 percent missing maybe not all will but there are quite a lot uh, potential for for more users of open innovations and the very great thing we learned is more than 60 percent um of the surveyed energy access practitioners would actually be open to share parts of their innovations. Obviously not everything, but parts of their innovations, they feel, okay, that's a work, this is of value for the sector. If I would now how to, to open source and, how, and somebody who supports and provides uh, possibly also some funds in documenting and promoting and disinimating, there are a lot of sector stakeholders willing to share their innovations with the others. So, and then one last one on the impact that we have been able to measure. As, as you might imagine, measuring impact with open source is always a bit tricky because it's open. So um, as it's open, free to access, free to use, nobody has to give you credits, has to ask you permission. Uh, they can ask you for support, um, and this is also happening, but they don't have to. So people can just go, download the source code, download the production files, and just replicate, adopt, adapt, and do it by their own. That's the, exactly what we want to do. That's what we want to push. We want companies to do that. However, still, uh, we have contact with, with some of the adopters and are trying to reach out to them and to understand the benefits that the open innovations that we have promoted have been had to them. And one figure that we have been able to pull out uh, of this surveying is that uh, more than 700,000 we are able to save by open innovations to the sector. And this is on, on, the, on the result of one particular open source innovation that has um, been pushed in the sector. Um, the 700k per year could be translated also to make 500 new connections uh, or reducing the price um, for solar home systems to the customers by, by 10%. So that's how an excess impact become uh, obvious. Now, I have told you a lot about open source and why open source and what where's the sector today and um, on our impact. Now let me come to some tools. Uh, we will walk you through most of our open source portfolio tools we have today very quickly. Later on, you will have the possibility to choose um, two of those, uh, which we will dive a bit deeper in the session. And afterwards, there will also be a Q&A and you will be able to ask questions on any of the projects. Actually, you're already able to ask questions. Uh, as already said, just put your questions in the chat. You can already start doing that right now. Um, and we will try to answer as many of the questions as possible by the end um, of this webinar in the Q&A session. Um, so there you see the overview of all the open, of our portfolio open innovations we have. There's an open battery management system, the open Pago token that some of you might already know, particularly the ones that work with Pago. Uh, Cicada IoT comms module, an open smart meter, an Airlink, a Bluetooth-based communication, and then some more finance and business models, which are open source. It's the GeoEC initiative, which we started to come off the ground, and um, the aggregate business model. So let me get started. The open battery management system we have is a customizable battery bandage system for lithium ion batteries uh, in off -grid, for off-grid uh, applications. It's uh, suitable for 12 to 48 volt systems. So you could put up to 16 salts uh, in series um, and is a, has a power rating for up to 100 amps, which can match uh, a four kilo, ki, four ki, K4A inverters. Uh, so, not like large, large systems, but in, if you're in the energy access space, like the, it's not just for solar home system, it's for serious power, for actually powering machines. Um, it uh, supports different uh, cell type and cell chemistries. It comes already with built-in CAN serial, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi uh, connectors. 
but also can be easily uh, extended to GSM or Laravel or other user interfaces um, by design. So it's prepared to be kind of modular in terms of the communication modules or the communication way you want to use. And that's again on what it is about. It's we want to, we know we can't provide the perfect BMS to everybody, but we want to cut off the pain of starting from scratch. We want to provide a high quality baseline that you then can build on top of and make the, the last tweaks that you need to make it usable for you. And what I forgot to mention, it was developed by um, LibreSolar, an uh, open source dedicated uh, energy engineering company. Um, then the open PayGo token um, developed by Solaris Offgrid in, in the PayGo Ops uh, suite. Uh, it's an open source token decryption, encryption and decryption system to enable uh, devices to become uh, PayGo compatible. It's uh, integrated with most uh, PayGo software platforms, so kind of agnostic from the platform uh, loan pro, uh, platform provider using. It's not only working with the PayGo ops from Solaris Offgrid, it's also compatible with the other ones. Um, it's a secure way to con remotely control, activate, and deactivate uh, PayGo systems. Um, and yeah, the, the main point we, we saw and we see in this uh, development is the interoperability across the sector that the PAYGO token is allowing and was based on. So uh, you don't have a customer login or you are not bound to just one loan platform forever because of the additional integration work. The PAYGO token is already integrated and is widely adopted in the sector by several manufacturers. So the next one is the Cicada Wi-Fi GSM and LTE modules. Um, this is this is software and hardware, like hardware and firmware. Um, these are modules that can be plugged in or built in into your existing uh, solar home system, solar pump, uh, remotely used uh, renewable energy devices, uh, whatsoever you, they are, um, and allows communication depending on which model you use on, on Wi-Fi, GSM, LTE. And it's, again, completely open source available. It's agnostic uh, from the platform. Um, also, it can easily be adjusted or adapted to other microcontrollers or operating systems. Um, the great idea behind this uh, modules developed by Okra Solar is that we are in some countries, we already completed the transition from 2G to 4G. Others still, still aren't there, but at some point 2G support will be switched off by the telecom providers and we will rely on 4G. So it's important to have an easy transition and an easy, relatively easy reintegration from the, from the one to the, to the other technology. And by using this uh, open source infrastructure, which is here provided by Okra, uh, this is facilitated. Um, and we have also a PCBA assembled for the Wi-Fi module uh, on Seed Studio. So often we get the questions by people that are interested in the open source innovations we have. Uh, okay, great, but I would like to have one in my hand to, to see if I really believe in the design. I mean, it's different to look at the production file and the, and the cut key cut files uh, and the bill of materials than having it actually in the hand, in the hand and being able to do some tests and measurements. So in that case, for the Wi-Fi module, it's on Seed Studio. We're working on, on bringing the others as well on Seed Studio. Uh, but it's, as you can imagine, also costs it's like some additional cost to pre-finance these. Um, also for the other hardware innovations, we're working on that. But yeah, for this one, you can just order it. It gets sent to you. And then you have a, a pre-manufactured PCBA at your lab, for example. And you can do whatever measurements uh, you want on them and then decide if you want to, to go on and using them. Um, the next one is the open smart meter designed and developed by first Nigerian company, First Electric. It's a low cost um, uh, original uh, electricity manufacturer agnostic GSM prepaid smart meter, uh, which has been developed and produced in, in Nigeria. Um, it's designed for AC applications. It comes currently with a 
RC232 communication and the GSM communication, which is actually the CICADA module, which we just mentioned. So you see the, the ecosystem of open source innovations working together here. So the, the smart meter uses another open source innovation, and that's exactly what we what we believe in. Um, don't reinvent the wheel, just use what is there and make it make the best use for, for your product out of it. Um, but you could also, it's a uh, plugged in, so you could also use other communication protocols if you do this adoption work for you. You don't need to use the, the Cicada modules. Um, it has a customizable API and already has an, an easy to use a web interface for, for customers to top up or for the agent to top up the, the client smart meters. Uh, yeah, I think that's on the smart meter. Then uh, last software uh, innovations we have uh, is the Airlink developed by Tanzanian company, company Simo Solar. It's a relay extension for data transmission for sm low cost, small remote devices based on Bluetooth. Uh, it, al it allows pago readiness for very small remote devices which don't have a keypad or which are hard to access. Um, by using a Bluetooth chip, which is inbuilt in, in, uh, in the devices, and the phone of the customer or an agent as a gateway to carry the, da the data in, in bi-directional way. So it can transfer the token to the device, but also pick up some data from the device and send it to a cloud once uh, the phone gets internet connection. Uh, it also automatically comes with a location stolen or lost device uh, feature. So there's a database. So whenever one of your devices gets lost, you could uh, notify it as lost. And whenever anybody else with the gateway app walks close by it, uh, you would get a notification where it has been found. Um, yeah, I think this is the most important thing about the AirLink. It comes with with the whole uh, software stack, the back end, uh, which is running on, on the server, but also the gateway app, um, which allows the registration of the devices um, and the transmission of the data. Now we are going to less technology-based innovations um, and have a, like business or finance innovations. There's the distributed renewable energy certificates. Um, pushed by, developed by Power Trust and South Pole, and which today is the DREC initiative, a multi-stakeholder initiative. Uh, we were approached by these two in the, in the past and were the, the first supporter of this idea uh, because we believed in the fact that decentralized renewable energies are, are not able to access uh, easily the, the certification market and the, the offset market by, by big corporates. And that's a financing source which has been underexploited for decentralized renewable energies, particularly because mostly decentralized renewable energies have a lot of added, added value. It's often used, it's electrification of schools, of health facilities, which haven't been electrified uh, before. So it's not just a renewable energy you're producing, it's actually you're producing renewable energy and electrifying uh, critical infrastructure in remote areas. And all that can be captured um, in the information of the DREC, uh, of the DREX, the decentralized renewable energy certificates. And that's one of the things that, that we, as early supporter, we push this open source foundation um, of, of the DREC, uh, like algorithm infrastructure to, to, make, to make sure that there's uh, traceability and verification can easily be done because there, there's, yeah, there's the transparency to, to look at what is actually being done and how the verification is done, what, how are the data processed. Um, and, and today this materializes in the fact that the DREC initiative is close to be actually building into a, a like own entity and also other stakeholders um, are taking over the, the infrastructure um, that has been built. And all this is possible because of the, of the open source nature um, of this, and I would highly recommend to to decentralized renewable energy companies to look at uh, the possibility to uh, monetize renewable energy production and the additional uh, impact that they are generating with with their 
initial electrification initiatives with the, with the DUEC initiative. And last portfolio uh, innovation we have is a business model, uh, which is called Agrigrid here, uh, has been developed by Anka Madagascar. It's a business model that goes away from the idea of selling rural electrons to creating rural wealth, because that's what we should actually aim for. It's not just providing electricity for the sake of providing electricity, it's because we want to create uh, rural wealth, economic growth, etc. Uh, it's based on the idea that the mini grid company in the rural area actually engages actively in rural pre-processing of agricultural goods and particularly in the, in the logistics and access to market challenges that uh, companies in the rural areas com uh, commonly face. And using and levering the management and logistical capacity of a mini grid company to actually make that possible. Um, this innovation comes in that case, it's not the technology, it comes uh, with a toolkit. It's a lessons learned document, a close description, how to identify value chains that are suitable, uh, business modeling uh, tools, etc., and evaluation tools on evaluating if a value chain and the business model can work for your particular case. These are, I think this were seven of our innovations that we assumed might be the most interesting ones. You will now have a few minutes poll time to uh, tell me which of the following five uh, open innovations you would willing to learn a bit more. Um, there's the open smart meter, the open BMS, open Pago token, Airlink, which for one some reason run a bit to the right, and the distributed renewable uh, energy certificates. Um, there will uh, be a poll question coming up and uh, feel free to, to pick uh, one or two of those. Uh, I will focus a bit more on them later. In any case, there will be the Q&A and you can ask questions on any of other innovations. And meanwhile, you are um, giving your opinions and asking for more information. I will go to two projects that are that we are currently working on. The one is the Open Pago Pass. Uh, it's an RFID, RFID token transmission system and uh, the open source micropower management. On this, this is an existing innovation, but we are working here on the extension for the use for solar home systems. So uh, let me go to the Open Pago Pass. Um, this is again a project which is currently being developed by Solaris Offgrid. It's in the Pago Ops. Um, we the, the the Open Pago Pass technology is a, a simplified way of transmitting tokens. So instead of typing a token in a keypad, you would just have, or the user would have a RFID tag and switching going to his agent, getting a token with this. Uh, with this tag from the agent and then going to its device and just swapping it over and transmitting the token. So you don't have typo mistakes and have to go back to three kilometers to the agent because the token is properly saved on the, uh, on the tag. But one very additional feature that we see here is that you can actually have a bi-directional information flow. So you can also pick up information from these devices. So often in very low cost devices uh, of solar home systems or solar pumps, which are Pago enabled, you don't have a, a data communication to, to the manufacturer or to the operator or the distributor, which makes it very hard to know whenever a an, an replacement or, or whenever any maintenance on, on these are required. Also to understand that the, the customer behavior to be able to optimize the, uh, the products. Now with this tag, you have basically a bi-directional feedback. It's not real time. It's not directly IoT like a GSM module communicating, but a lot of these devices are anyway in places where there is no GSM or 4G communication. But you have at least some from time to time when the client picks a new token, you can transfer information in both directions. And this also helps a lot for verifying RBF schemes to see, to actually have a data validation on, on how is actually the usage of the 
energy X on the devices that have been funded or supported by funding schemes. Um, so you have a long-term monitoring and evaluation tool in hand. Um, and lastly, the MicroPower Manager developed by Inensus as said earlier, this is an innovation that has not initially been supported by an access. It has been developed uh, outside of an access and is a CRM and a customer management uh, platform and energy management platform for mini grids mainly. We are now currently working and it comes with the full suite with a ticketing system, et cetera, and is being used uh, by many grid companies already. And we are now currently working together with Inensys towards making it easier to use also and make it usable for solar home system companies to manage solar home system assets. Um, and it comes here again with the Jiro reference system, a ticketed system for the clients. It will display uh, default payments, etc all the tools that you will need for uh, managing your solar home system portfolio it has already a couple of mobile money integrations and we are trying towards to getting additional mobile money integrations to make it uh, wider usable in the sector by more uh, by by more stakeholders of the sector um yeah, I think that's it on the portfolio and the projects in progress. I'm now looking at the poll and I see if there is, you have just another 10 seconds to vote if you haven't done it. Uh, currently, there's the Open Smart Meter and the DREC initiative. Ah, oh, no, we have now, now it's tricky. We have the smart meter, the open payco token, and the DREX. I would actually now decide to go, um, sorry, because I just will have time for two, to go for the smart meter and the DREX. Uh, feel free, if you have any questions on the payco token, to post the, those as questions. I will try to address them. And no, on the smart meter, let me provide a bit more on, on history, why we decided to go for a smart meter um, because as you might know, there are already smart meters out there, proprietary commercial smart meters that, um, that you can purchase uh, and use. But often these come uh, with high cost, obviously, um, or they come with low cost initially, but you are bound to use the, the company's or the manufacturer's IoT platform. So you can't use your own platform or only with a lot of pain work on doing their own integration. Sometimes it's not even really possible. Um, and this is one of the reasons, this is an observation, but also another observation, it's also one that uh, that I had, even though we decided to, to develop the open span before I joined an access, I 100% support this idea because I have seen in the energy access space, in the mini grid space, how a lot of mini grid companies, which in fact are small utilities, started to develop their own smart meter, even though there were commercial solutions available. And I still see this happening. And so there must be a reason, either they're too expensive, they're not usable, they, they, they want to use their own IoT platform, or some of the features are not fitting what they actually want, whatever. There can be a, lo a lot of reasons. And uh, First Electric was one of these companies facing exactly this challenge and saying, okay, we are developing our own, but okay, with NX is together providing funding, we are willing to do it open source. And we are 100% aware that the open smart meter as it's developed is not the perfect meter fitting all the needs of everybody in any use case, but it's a baseline infrastructure that you can start using and doing the last 30, 20, 40% of development, but not 100% from scratch. So the idea, and that's again the idea what we try to push here, we want to provide the sector and the sector stakeholders with baseline infrastructure to, to boost and fast track their development to short shortcut basically the R&D work that uh, you guys need to do or have to do. And that's what excited us about the, the, smart, meet, uh, the smart meter. And we are actually currently working in an in adoption process with uh, Cameroonian company Solarly who is working on, they did some additional like restructuring of the code, so it's easier to, to adopt, but also the main work they're doing is actually, they're now using the open pay go token. And now I'm 
talking again about the Pegotong, that's great that we have four votes for it as well, um, which is for now time-based. It's a time-based, uh, you can encrypt days, hours, months, weeks, um, but you can't encrypt energy. And for a smart meter, which is metering energy, so energy is the interesting unit. So they're currently working on transforming this, the Pay, the Pegotum, which is time-based in an energy-based version to integrate with the open smart meter. So because for now it's running on an STS-like token system, it's not using the open Pego token because it's time-based, but the Cameroon company Solarly is currently working together with First Electric and us and making that integration. So you have, again, uh, in the open smart meter, you would have the Cicada modules and the open Pego token integrated. And this is these kind of ecosystem solutions that uh, that we believe in and that we want to push. Um, so I think that's a bit more on, on the smart meter and the reasoning why we developed the smart meter and also some outlook on what is going to happen to have the open Pago token uh, energy-based integrated with the smart meter. Um, I guess that's all that I want to add for now. Also, because we are already quite advanced in the timing for today, um, so let me go to the DREC initiative and the De Decentralized Renewable Energy Certificates. As I mentioned earlier, and that's, I want to highlight that again, it's a platform in, in the past, if you wanted to certify renewable energy production to monetize it on a, on an offset market, it's, it was a very painful, it's a very painful manual process and, and feeling documents and going a verification process and so on, which makes a lot of sense for larger scale uh, energy installations or at least C and I installations. However, for mini grid or larger solar home systems and so on, this is not a feasible way to do like this kind of paperwork and verification process. You need an automated automized data collection and data processing and data verification uh, process and algorithm that requires a one-time integration work and then runs mainly automatically. And that's exactly what the uh, decentralized renewable energy certificates with the DREC initiative are achieving. The, it, it requires some additional integration support, of course. You have to register yourself, you have to register your devices, you have to make sure that the data flow is working reliably between uh, between your uh, your devices and and the platform, but then when this works reliably, there's not much you have to do actually. The, the renewable energy production is agglomerated to certificates of one kilowatt hour each, and then get bundled, and then it depends on on which deal has been achieved by the brokers with corporate buyers, then the, the payments are done on monthly or quarterly basis uh, to, to you as a, and then it depends who makes this registration. Is it the manufacturer or is it the operator? Most likely it's the operator because it's the one producing the energy in fact. Um, but that's, uh, but also for manufacturers it can be interesting to already do the, uh, the integration like as inbuilt. So, any like implementer might be more interested in buying your assets as they're already integrated with the uh, with the direct platform and makes then the monetization much easier. And one other part I, I wanted to highlight again, I, I know I mentioned it earlier, is uh, this addition, this additionality that DREX come with because at, at the registration process, what you can make clear is what the energy is used for. What the, what is the en uh, renewable energy used for? Is it to actually electrify a nursery in a remote area or a health cell, the hospital, which can now store medicines and vaccines, which was not possible earlier? And these are additional values that corporate buyers, CSR departments of large companies, might be much more interested in, or might be additionally be interested to, to invest in, aside from just the renewable energy production. And that's also part of the DREX certificates. And it's a, the great value of of this uh, uh, project. And that's why we also believe that the early stage in this project and later on a lot of other funders came in and pushed it. And today it's become gross and corporate buyers are buying these certificates and 
GIE companies are able to monetize their renewable energy production. And one uh, feature which I have, to, I would just want to highlight it. I, I think it's not currently 100% implemented, but it's still in the pipeline here for the DREC initiative. It's the pre sales facility. So, actually, one problem that the energy access companies in the audience might know is the, the financing gap you have uh, for your projects. So one idea which is hopefully coming in the future is the pre-financing of, uh, of renewable energy production. So actually you sell your, you're selling your certificates for the next three years upfront, which helps you in the initial phase, in the CARPEX initial phase for, for example, solar home assist air for mini grids to overcome the, the financing gap because you have already sold the three years renewable energy certificates, which you then have to produce. Um, and it's blockchain based, so it's temper proof. You only can sell it once. And it's very important also to generate trust. You cannot sell to multiple entities uh, your certificates. Um, yeah, that said, I would say it's time to go over to Q&A so that uh, we can also look at some general questions about the other projects that I have not targeted particularly or any other pro questions. Hey Vivian, thanks. Thank you very much for that uh, presentation. <clears throat> I am. Uh, I think it was. It's quite a lot, and I'm hoping that our audience has has been able to uh, to to intake. I, for me, I was particularly um, interested seeing that you know you've touched on these these key uh, these key points that I think are, are really part, I know obviously open access has been working on a number of other countries in Africa. So I know you understand the context and when you talk about, you know, not, not starting from scratch, the, the security issues, this being secured, being robust, um, being platform agnostic, because we know we are working with a number of different platforms and, and, uh, and above all, you know, having this focus on rural wealth. Um, I think it, it really shows the uh, the value that that some of these tools can bring to 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 the companies that are operating within the Mozambican context. I have to say I was quite surprised. I think it's a, it was a tight there between the open pay pego token because I know a lot of the companies that are here would would be would be using those and it's this um, Mozambique is also faced with a lot of this the literacy issues right of copying these numbers and copying these codes. Uh, these things do make life easier. Okay, so we have, I know we, we have promised that we will end at three. I know this is this is when you're having fun, time <laughs> move flies. So um, I have, we have a couple of questions. Uh, let me, let me sort them out. I know there are questions that haven't necessarily been directed about the presentation. Um, you know, we've had uh, we've had questions from Elias and Andrea on on the, on the conferences and so on. So we will definitely share that. Um, we have one question from Clara, which says, "Hello, I'm interested in one of your open innovations. How do I get it? And do you help to adapt it or customize it for my needs?" Uh, and I'm not sure, Vivian, you can tell me how you want to do it. We have. Uh, do you want to answer one by one, or do we? Or do we go for a couple? We have in the total right now. We have, including with Clara's question, we have other another two. Yeah, I think we can go one by one. Also, because I think there's one which is pot potentially addressed to you. So um, I, I would answer this one from Clara. Um, so if yeah, if if you're interested in in one of the innovations and say, okay, I. Uh, where can I find it? So the, the question, uh, this is the first one easy. You can go to our homepage, uh, nexus.org, and then you go on materials. And there you will find the comfort zone with the project. There's again, everything written nicely. There are some videos sometimes document nicely presented, not techy yet. So that's like high level, executive level and uh, get to use it. And from there, you on all the technology projects and so you always get a link to the github repositories 
where the source code or the production files and the bit of materials and the full documentation uh, can be found. Um, this is then like for the more tech uh, personnel. Uh, that's how you can get it. And from there you can download it and do whatever with it. And if you need uh, some help and customization, uh, please reach out to us. Um, we have an email address we'll also show it later, help at annexus.org, um, and reach out with your questions. We have some limited like facility to provide some initial support on, on how to, to adapt. Um, and uh, and customize it. We obviously can't like provide extensive support to everybody for free forever. Uh, but we will try come out come with your question. We will first we will not charge you for asking. We'll also not charge you for the initial uh, answering. If then it needs a lot of additional support, we will see if we can be able to do it and, and look for funds or ask you for funds or rather often direct you to somebody that we believe is more suited to help you on that. Um, but coming to us that's exactly what we want we want you to direct to to the right information and start uh, get started um yeah perfect thank you thank you Vivian. um Claude, i hope that that's been that now been answered we have another question from laercia which says hello are they affordable and then the second part of the question is rural communities can have the purchasing power so Maybe you ask the first part, and then I can delve into a little bit on the on the purchasing power of rural communities in Mozambique. Yeah, the, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, are they affordable? Um, yes, I mean we we target with our innovations. We do not engage in the development of, and I think we talk here mainly about hardware because software. I mean, affordable. You just download the the source code, so. It, it, just costs you like a few kilobytes of your internet connection. Um, but on the hardware, yeah, we only engage in products where we see a chance that the outcome is close or cheaper than the commercial solution. Sometimes it's not cheaper, but it has other advantages. It's customizable, but we would not develop a solution which is four times the cost than any proprietary commercial that doesn't make sense. So the, the open source value is not compensating that price. So, the smart meter and the BMS are definitely cost competitive with, with proprietary solutions uh, out there in the market and can even be cheaper if you get the, the local manufacturing. Uh, over to you, Ricardo, for the second part. Okay, thanks. Thanks, you. So I, I, I'm hoping that that's very clear now, uh, Lars, which is, uh, you know, all of what and uh, all of what Vivian has presented, all of the code that it is, it's all downloadable and free. Right. And, and then he's NS has also offered, uh, you know, if you have questions, so all of this is free. It's the hardware part that obviously um, there's a cost associated to it. And and I think what 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 NX is doing is a lot of what a lot of the companies that we are seeing in Mozambique. This is I think your question is always the biggest uh, concern that we know as and i speak for mozambique but but i also have this other hat where i i i i work for an impact investment firm and we are we are doing impact investment to ensure that there is energy access across africa and and this is always the question regardless of the technology that you're doing it if you're using solar home systems if you're using clean cooking solutions if you're using mini grids it's always about we know that the normal grid is not going to get there, but there is a cost associated. You know, every time you turn, switch on your light, if you're connected to a grid, you're paying. Um, if the cost, if you are providing that service to a rural community, that cost cannot be higher. Um, and it's also because we are targeting, and normally, as you understand, and you've put here, and I think it, your question implies that, that rural communities are, are poor or have less purchasing power and therefore cannot afford uh, uh, very expensive solutions. Um, and, and I think that also dictates, so so that's not only it's obvious, but it also dictates the market, right? A lot of, and I will now bring it home to Mozambique, a lot of the solar home system companies that are operating on Mozambique or the clean energy companies that are operating, that is exactly 
the crux of it, which is you are being pushed to to um, uh, sorry, points about that. You are being pushed to service customers that have a very low purchasing power that maybe live with less than one dollar, less than three dollars, or even less than six dollars a day. Um, and you are selling them a system that is a hundred dollars. So how do they do it? And uh, it's there's always this what we ask about the affordability. It's always about affordability. Are the solutions that you are driving towards uh, rural populations affordable? And I think on one sense is depending on the technology. So it is up to the companies that are doing these solar home systems or these clean cooking solutions and using pay as you go systems or mini grids to say this is the tariff and to make it affordable right when we are bringing this uh, innovation from or from open access if it's the software as we has said it's for free if it's hardware that also will be a cost that is incorporated but as vision said these studies are always done before because you also don't want to be in a position where you have invested so much in a mini grid and uh, in your expansion business or even developing a specific tool. And then you come to find out, well, actually, the people can't pay. And people in rural communities, I think we often have this idea that oh, because people are poor, they can be taken advantage. They are very clever. And they will know exactly what is being charged in the next village, what is being charged in the next town. And they will not accept to pay more. So this is very much dictated also by the market, right? And it, it only makes sense if you are able to be within the market cost. So I'm hoping that I've answered, I've answered that question. But it is always, I think, when you're looking at energy access for rural populations, the question of affordability is always a, a key question. And you have to charge. It's only viable if you are charging something that is affordable. And I can always, and I can also tell you. The, uh, the assumption that is done on the other way, which is giving it for free, is also not a good solution. Uh, but then, I mean, we can have a whole webinar on that. <laughs> so I will stop, my, I will stop my, my, my answer there. And I will go to the last one that we have, which is um, from Guillermo. Uh, I have seen the open pay go token. And when you talk about token here, is it just the credit? for the user to have access to the electricity, or is it a token that can be incorporated into the financial pool and increase its value and empower itself in a business model that benefits the project? It's a very good question. I'll, I'll give it up yeah. to you. Yeah, definitely. And just uh, saying back on, on the last, on what you said on affordability, yeah, that's what we want. We want to like drop the costs of electricity. That's the the main purpose we want to drop the cost of R&D for the companies and that's the whole purpose of what we are doing now on this uh, open paygo questions uh, it's a token for the customers to insert in their solar home system solar pump and so on it's not the token in, in the second sense on on the financial pool that you have created it's really the encryption and decryption algorithm for a token to be used in in solar home system devices um, and and why it's open it's because there have been a lot of different token systems in the past and manufacturers need to pre prepare their devices for different token systems and uh, operators had the pain to not being really quickly be able to change between different ones so here the core value of this open pay token is the interoperability between the different uh, platform providers the agnostic of different platforms that's uh, what it is about but yeah it's only a token system for um uh, like an airtame encrypted token system that's what it has been designed for okay perfect thank you uh Vivian. i see there we've had thanks for 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 the answers we are on top of the hour we have um run this very specifically I think the, on, on time management, I'd like to thank you all. If you have any outstanding questions uh, or, um, or you would like to have more information on any other of, of, other of these, um, do feel free. I'm also going to go on a free limb here and say that if we have enough interest for one or other tool, I'm sure um, 
vision uh, and we can we wouldn't mind doing another webinar or something like this where we could we could uh, explore uh, one one specifically or two that you have of interest and we could really dive into it maybe I'd give you some some of some of the examples um so i would like to take this opportunity to thank nxs for for reaching out to us and 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 and, and being able to showcase these wonderful tools uh, to the sector in general and to anyone that's here and and to thank you all for the participants for staying with us and taking this uh, this hour out of your afternoon to come and little learn a little bit about more our contacts are are on the on the screen so do feel free to to get in touch Vivian any last words from your side before we close uh, totally we would be more than happy to do that and we actually did a cicada webinar cicada demo last week two weeks ago and we do that on different products. We have done it for the BMS. So totally, if there's interest, we are more than happy to jump on that and, and provide that. Um, and yeah, it was a great pleasure. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you for collaborating on that with us. And thank you for the audience for the great questions and for sticking with us for the whole hour. OK, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Bye.